publication of confidential documents on the agency. In fact, uh, the collection uh, of some 8,761 documents which we published uh, on Tuesday is already the largest uh, publication of confidential documents uh, on the agency. Um, the uh, material comes from an isolated uh, that means disconnected from other computer systems, uh, top-secret security network situated inside the CIA's Center for Cyber uh, Intelligence. Now, that center is uh, both uh, in Virginia, uh, but also, importantly, there is a uh, branch hidden uh, inside the Frankfurt Consulate uh, in Germany. Uh, we've put out some aerial... Uh, shots of that and the details uh, from our publications about how CIA uh, officers are instructed to penetrate uh, German customs and operate there to develop uh, uh, attacks and support attacks across Europe, Africa and the Middle East from the Frankfurt Consulate. Um, now, this has already come out uh, as a result of our earlier publications. I'll, I'll go into reactions and updates quickly, but um, the Central Intelligence Agency lost control uh, of its entire cyber weapons arsenal. What do I mean by cyber weapons? Uh, th those are weaponized viruses, trojans, uh, and malware designed to penetrate the uh, smartphones, smart TVs, uh, computer systems of the world, uh, and then control them, uh, disable them, uh, uh, insert information to them, extract information from them. Uh, now, this is a historic act uh, of uh, devastating incompetence to have created such an arsenal uh, and stored it uh, all in one place uh, and not secured it. Um, uh, WikiLeaks uh, discovered the material as a result of it being passed around a number of different uh, members of the US intelligence community out of control in an unauthorized fashion. Uh, just yesterday we've had a, a tip-off from a, a virus researcher who says that um, he believes that one of the viruses uh, whose uh, descriptions uh, we had published that infects uh, Apple Macintoshes, in particular their uh, uh, UFI uh, boot system, that he was attacked by that. Uh, so it looks like um, not only is that material uh, being spread around uh, contractors uh, and um, former um, American uh, computer hackers uh, for hire, but now may be uh, in the in the black market or is perhaps being used uh, by these uh, American hackers who sometimes uh, you know cross both sides of the of the of the fence they're called uh, gray hats uh, uh, in uh, to attacking others so the CIA developed a giant arsenal the uh, what appears to be the largest arsenal of trojans and viruses in the world that attacks uh, most of the um, systems that uh, journalists, uh, people in government, politicians, uh, CEOs and average people use, uh, didn't secure it, lost control of it, and then uh, uh, appears to have covered up that fact. Uh, we see some press reportage and we've detected uh, some things as well uh, that the Central Intelligence Agency uh, became aware uh, within the last uh, couple of months uh, that it had um, lost that material or that we had that material uh, and uh, has not uh, disclosed that uh, to the public at least, uh, has not warned the public uh, that those loose uh, cyber weapons arsenal uh, is out there. Uh, it's a very interesting question I think about who it is told in government and when uh, has it told, did it tell Barack Obama? Did Barack Obama uh, conceal that uh, during the election, after the election? Uh, does, was President uh, Donald Trump uh, informed? 
And if so, why has the Central Intelligence Agency not acted with speed uh, to come together with Apple, Microsoft and other manufacturers uh, to defend us all uh, from its own weapon systems? Uh, now, this brings into question the in entire uh, concept of cyber warfare uh, because it is our analysis uh, and stated also by many other experts that uh, it is impossible to keep effective control of cyber weapons. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you build them, eventually you will lose them. They are just information. Uh, there's no barrier for, for them spreading uh, across the world. They must be used uh, on the Internet. So they must be uh, placed on the Internet uh, to be used. Uh, they must go to computers to infect them. Uh, and therefore, um, when that occurs, they can get out of control. And there's a very easy cover uh, for any grey market operator, contractor, uh, or rogue intelligence agent uh, to take that material and start uh, a company with it, start a consulting company, uh, a hacker for hire company. Uh, now we're very fortunate in this case uh, that uh, our sources step forward to us uh, so we can tell you uh, what has been going on and so uh, the various uh, uh, manufacturers like Apple, uh, Google and so on uh, can start to develop countermeasures. Now some of those countermeasures uh, have already been put in place according to the manufacturers in response to this. Uh, one or two virus companies uh, are also say that they have developed countermeasures. Um, but others say that they need more information. Uh, now WikiLeaks has not published any uh, cyber weapons themselves. We've published documents uh, describing them. Why? It's fairly obvious. Uh, we don't want the journalists and people of the world uh, uh, and our sources being hacked uh, using uh, these weapons. But the problem is that with limited information about the details of how those cyber weapons operate, there is a limited ability to try and uh, produce security fixes uh, for iPhones, for Samsung TVs, for uh, uh, Android, phone, Android phones that are produced by Google, for Microsoft and for Linux, uh, because the exact technical details are not known. Now, uh, WikiLeaks has a lot more uh, information uh, on uh, what has been going on with the cyber weapons program. Uh, and so I want to announce uh, today that after uh, considering um, uh, what we think is the best way to proceed and uh, hearing these calls from um, some of the manufacturers. Uh, we have decided to uh, work with them uh, to give them some exclusive access uh, to the additional technical details we have uh, so that fixes uh, can be developed uh, and pushed out so people can be secured. And then once this material is effectively uh, disarmed uh, by us, by removing critical components, uh, we will publish uh, additional details uh, about uh, what has been occurring. Um, now, I want to draw attention uh, to a statement that the uh, president of Microsoft has put out. Uh, and this is something that we have been working on uh, as well and that a great many others have been calling for. Um, so here is the quote. Uh, just as the Fourth Geneva Convention has long protected civilians in times of war, we now need a digital Geneva Convention that will commit governments to protecting civilians from nation-state attacks in times of peace. And just as the Fourth Geneva Convention uh, recognized that the protection of civilians required the active involvement of the Red Cross, protection against nation-state cyber attacks requires the active assistance of technology companies and companies like WikiLeaks, which can provide information about these attacks. The tech sector plays a unique role in the internet's, as the Internet's first responders, and we therefore should commit 
ourselves to a collective action which will make the internet a safer place, affirming the role, our role, as a neutral digital Switzerland that assists people all over the world uh, uh, to be secure. Um, so now I will uh, go on to some questions. Uh, first of all, um, and I confess this is one uh, from me, um, does WikiLeaks have a position uh, on this sort of material? Well, WikiLeaks has a, a position on publishing in general. We fight for the rights of publishers to publish. Uh, we fight for the rights of sources to be protected. Uh, and we fight for media accuracy, having obtained a perfect record in the last 10 years. It's one of our comparative advantages. But otherwise, we don't have a position on particular issues that we're publishing about. But in this case, we do have a position. Uh, we have a position because these types of cyber weapons are used to attack the communication technology that journalists use to communicate with their sources and with each other. The sorts of technology uh, that investigative reporters reporting on the national security sector, reporting on war crimes, use uh, to communicate their information within their media organization uh, and back and forth with their sources. For example, the New York Times uh, has uh, put up a tip line uh, that is based upon the Signal protocol. Now, Signal is a, uh, a good encryption system for uh, mobile smartphones. But what's the problem? Well, if you control the smartphones, it doesn't matter how good the encryption system is. So Signal and Telegram, from that perspective, can simply be, be bypassed by attacking the endpoints, attacking uh, one of the uh, telephones belonging to the source or one of the telephones uh, belonging to the journalist. And the New York Times has a central tip line, one phone that all its tips go to for the Signal protocol. Uh, and of course, that phone can be hacked. It doesn't matter what the security uh, system is. As a result, you see the numbers coming into the coming into it, and you see the messages exchanged. So WikiLeaks does have a pos position. Uh, we want to secure communications technology because without secure communications technology, uh, journalists are not able to effectively hold the state to account. Is WikiLeaks protections for its sources are they affected by this? No. Uh, they're not affected, not directly. Why is that? Well, because we're specialists in this area. We're specialists in source protection. Uh, and I've known uh, in general about this type of problem for a long time. Uh, so our systems are developed to uh, not be exposed. They're not based on smartphones, for example. We have specialized cryptography. Uh, there's not sus susceptible to these types of attacks. Uh, on the other hand, are our lawyers susceptible to these types of attacks? Yes, they are. Uh, a lot, well, a lot, of the, a lot of them are susceptible to these types of attacks. Are our key security staff? No, because we understand that. Uh, but we want to protect all our staff and the rights of journalists and sources uh, to communicate effectively. Okay, so that's my question. Now I go into the others. Uh, so, question from uh, CNN. Uh, as long as these are overseas targets, isn't it legal for the CIA to do this? Well, first of all, I just like to, it's a, a legally important question in the United States, but there are many questions that might be asked uh, by CNN, uh, a one that seems to uh, defend the interests of the CIA, I think is a bit problematic, has been the first question to ask. Um, well, the, the, uh, the answer is this. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the CIA does have a history of, of attacking not only uh, the political parties uh, uh, operating overseas. We just published how the Central Intelligence Agency uh, issued instructions to its staff to penetrate the last French election cycle in 2012, last French president, uh, presidential election. Uh, it has a habit. Uh, of behaving badly inside the United States as well. Now, um, 
that's an extensive habit going on for years. Uh, most recently, in 2014, uh, the CIA was denounced by the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee uh, because it had hacked uh, their investigation uh, in Congress uh, into the CIA torture program and had uh, used its uh, hackers to retrieve uh, documents uh, that the Senate Intelligence Committee had, uh, evidencing what the Central Intelligence Agency did uh, in terms of torture. Why did it do that? Well, the, I mean, it's given various excuses. The answer uh, probably is because it perceived that that information would be a threat to itself as an institution. This is how institutions behave, uh, especially uh, intelligence institutions. Uh, the CIA is the largest intelligence agency in the world by budget, uh, budgetary uh, expenditure. And of course, it wants to maximize uh, its own institutional power. Uh, and key individuals also want to defend their programs or um, increase uh, their roles, get themselves into a position where they can cash out uh, and go to work for uh, uh, defense contractors. What about WikiLeaks material uh, in the first part of Alt-7? Uh, does it uh, demonstrate the CIA hacking targets within uh, the United States? That's an interesting question. The answer is not no. Um, there are more than 22,000 IP addresses that we have detected, internet uh, addresses, uh, that correspond to computer systems uh, within the United States. Now, uh, one of the large research pro projects that we have underway is how many of those systems are attack systems that are used to relay and pass attacks from the CIA out into the rest of the world, uh, and how many of those are uh, intermediary victims, that is, um, say, uh, an internet service provider which is hacked in order to create an attack somewhere else, overseas, uh, and how many are direct victims, how many correspond to, say, a visitor uh, to the United States from a foreign country, how many correspond to joint operations between the CIA and FBI with the CIA providing technical support, etc. So that's a, a complex question uh, that is not yet resolved, but there are more than 22,000 uh, IP addresses corresponding to CIA activities in the United States. Um, a question, is there proof that the CIA are involved in internal struggle leaking as opposed to something else? Uh, well, we can't, we can't comment directly uh, on sourcing. Um, as someone who's studied the behavior for many years of intelligence agencies in different countries, it is an unusual time uh, in the United States to see uh, an intelligence agency so uh, prominently involved uh, in domestic politics. Uh, now, as a sort of le level of principle, that's, that's quite problematic. Uh, there are arguments on the other side that Obviously, if, if there's an extreme uh, government, uh, then perhaps that does call for illegal behavior uh, by an intelligence agency. Uh, we don't have an opinion uh, on whether that is the case yet or not in the United States. Uh, WikiLeaks uh, is, um, in, I guess, in intellectually intrigued to see uh, this conflict occurring. Uh, because it does tend to generate uh, whistleblowers uh, and sources on both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the implications for journalists and their sources? Well, I explained previously, um, these types of attack technology are used uh, to penetrate uh, the computers and phones that journalists used to communicate with each other and to communicate and protect their sources. I think that's an incredible problem. Um, in response to the Edward Snowden disclosures and some others, uh, much more encryption has been used uh, by uh, ind individual companies specializing in it, like Whisper Systems and like Telegram, but also 
included into Apple and Microsoft and other uh, products. So that is fairly effective at uh, hindering bulk interception, uh, which is what the National Security Agency has been doing, passively uh, taking all the information, say, that flows from Latin America uh, to North America or from North America to Europe. Um, but uh, in response, the Central Intelligence Agency, at least, uh, has uh, diversified to specialize on attacking the endpoints prior to encryption occurring or after decryption occurring. And you say, okay, but that at least means that they have to engage in targeted attacks, which is more, more expensive and might have more of an uh, audit trail. That's true, but the, we have uh, exposed a particular section of the Central Intelligence Agency called the Automated Implant Branch. So that is not just to develop uh, viruses and other attacks to put into people's computer systems uh, to facilitate a CIA hacker in doing that, but also to um, automate how that is done. So you can, you can see that between... Uh, an individual targeted attack, which is in direct and invasive, and massive passive bulk interception, there's an intermediary point, which is the increasing automation of targeted attacks. They're automated enough, they start to approach the level of bulk passive interception. We're not there yet uh, for most countries, uh, but we are shifting significantly away from one CIA officer directing one hacker uh, who attacks one target. Rather, we're seeing uh, systems developed and whole branches of the Central Intelligence Agency to automate uh, attacks and infestations of CIA malware into targets. How do these practices by the CIA impact on members of the general public? Android phones, iPhones, Samsung TVs, etc. Uh, well, in a, in a number of ways. So uh, you might think as a member of the uh, kind of average person, well, is the CIA interested in you? We, we have this problem that increasing automation of these attacks means that the interest may not have to be that high. Uh, you, might be, you might know someone who knows someone uh, who, say, works for the French government, uh, who will be the uh, target of such an attack because um, they're involved in uh, decision-making about large French exports. Uh, and we published a previous document showing how the ODNI, that's the oversight body for all uh, intelligence agencies, instructed the CIA to try and get hold of every single uh, French contract valued at over $200 million. Uh, similarly, in the information we revealed about uh, CIA attacks on the French political parties, uh, there was uh, two instructions to try and determine whether French political parties would try and uh, go for a more German-oriented uh, economic policy of increasing exports. Now, pre presumably what's going on is that the Central Intelligence Agency uh, and the ODNI um, through the, who they tend to be involved in contracting is close to organizations, say, like Boeing, uh, and then wants to assist uh, Boeing in unfair competition, say, against Airbus, uh, which the French have a stake in. Please like us and share with your social media. Please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of our new videos. Stay tuned. Victory of the Light. Event is coming soon. YouTube channel. Break the echo chamber. Share this with someone who needs to hear it. Or with someone you think might already get it. This video is Creative Commons. You have permission to download, copy, and distribute it by any means. If you'd like to support our work, you can donate at stormcloudsgathering.com forward slash donate.